I guess there's not a lot of people who have put faith on us. They have a, a history of underperforming on the international stage. I just have questions about their team. Most people thought they were going to be pretty trash. Every loss is just like, all right, this guy sucks. It's historically been very hard for North American League of Legends fans because basically we started out at the top because the game was made here and only North America could play the game. Ever since that point though, it's been a decline for North America. Frost will knock out Team Solo Bid. Fnatic taking down the North American champions, Cloud9. Samsung Blue of so the expectations of the North American League of Legends fans have gone down and down. The bar has been lowered and lowered every year. Last year's Worlds is kind of a good example because the North American teams were playing well and it looked like they could get out of groups. And then week two hits and North America as a region goes zero and 10 the entire week, losing more games than were even originally scheduled for them to play. Pain Gaming takes down Connor Logic Gaming. 27 kills in 25 minutes, it's over. Oh, double, double, man! Cloud9, why did you bother? The expectation for CLG and North America heading into MSI was no different. It was extremely low, definitely not making to the finals. Being at this big international event is pretty surreal. Seeing the guys like work really, really hard and seeing like go through stuff is like something a lot of fans I think don't think about. I would say maybe like day one, possibly going to day two, we were maybe a little jet lagged. I know personally me, I was a little behind on sleep. I know others were as well. Even though it's been a couple of days, uh, still like really tired at the end of the day. Wake up at like eight, Eat at 8.30. They got McDonald's hash browns down there. You know, we go for those. Good, good stuff. <laughs> ah. Go to the venue at 9, and as soon as we get to the venue, like, they just go straight into scrims. And then there's an hour break, back into scrims. Another hour break, back into scrims. So they're scrimming from, like, 10 to 10. We have to stay focused for, like, 12 straight hours, or, like, even more. So. People get like exhausted pretty easily. So every night before we play a game, we usually group together in like someone's hotel room. And then we go over like a scouting report that we, uh, one of our analysts has done for us. Uh, we talk about draft, uh, what we're most likely gonna pick, what we wanna ban. So we have everything set out the day before. First game for MSI for us, it was RNG. It looks like they're gonna be looking to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with RNG in team fights and surprise them with a new mid lane pick. I felt like we played it really, really well um, early to mid game. Counter Logic Gaming, they thought they had position, they thought they had it, but they didn't. It's a quadra for Royal. I guess our communication and like strategy wise wasn't really as effective as we thought it would be. RNG is gonna take the first game at MSI. The crowd erupt with noise as Royal find an opportunity to punish Counter Logic Gaming. After the game, we went back. We talked about how we could have played better, how things went wrong. Um, after that, we were like, we're just chalk it up and then let's go for the next game, like new slate. Now they are up against the Flash Wolves. Flash Wolves actually takes this. Lamb's respite goes down, and so will Ix Smithy as he's forced to hop out. Early game to mid game, we just try to survive. And then late game, I guess we're just trying to get control. And that's gonna look to be the necklace. The necklace, the necklace, the necklace. And the necklace. <laughs> Carter Logic Gaming comes up huge in their crutch match on Flash Wolves, and they take them down to get the necklace. On the Flash Wolves game, the focus wasn't there for us because everyone was sort of either tired or jet lag or I guess we just got lucky. Everyone I've talked to so far has said, first off, not only that, you know, CLG is not possibly going to make it out of groups, but also that SKT just hands down is going to win this whole thing. I don't think SKT is a hands down winner. I think CLG would definitely make it out of groups. I think we'll probably get top two. 
uh, obviously with Ben. So. Okay, boom, there we go. And everyone's reaction to Stix A saying, oh yeah, we'll get top two, uh, you know, with, without a smirk or without a smile cracking is, ah, is he serious? Like that's like North American empty bravado, basically. Well, I think it's like a good mentality to have is to always like be confident in yourself and your team. But coming to this tournament, I think just through our practice, uh, we realized that we're really not far from any of these teams. And if not, we might be better than a lot of these teams. Seeing the games uh, G2 played, I think they're playing like not as well as they were in uh, EU. And we are here at the Mid-Season Invitational, the beginning of day two, the North America versus Europe matchup here. If G2 wins, these teams are tied one to two, coming in 30% of the way through the group stage for these squads. We're all pretty confident going to the G2 match, uh, especially since they're having like a lot of internal issues. Representing North America, saying it's more than just NA versus EU, it's NA versus the world, and they start that out two to one. CLG is adapting, right? As they've learned that the meta here is going to be a bit more scrappy and fast paced, they're perfectly willing to jump into that. Now, it isn't perfect yet, but we'll see if they refine as the tournament goes on. Next Winning in groups is cool, but the main goal is to uh, get out of groups, get a top seed for worlds. CLG, now this is a team two and one here in the tournament, could be mm -hmm. three and oh, could be one and two. Uh, Spawn and I both put them at fifth yep, for, yep. for this tournament, so they're definitely exceeding expectations so far. You can't really be too hyped, especially after the first game of the day, since you got to play another one right after, so you just have to like, get back into the zone. Supermassive is not as strategically developed, so we're trying to advance ourselves just to play like strategically and like 2v1 or something like that. If they win this, they will tie second place with SKT, which is pretty incredible. Naru takes down Darshan, a turret falls down. They got the steal also. Oh my god, they've taken everything. They picked uh, high mobile champs, aggressive champs, early game, mid game. So that's what happened from laning phase all the way until the Nexus exploded. Supermassive make their mark here at MSI and they ace CLG. Definitely thought they outplayed us in all regards. We picked a couple champions, a tier lower for a smoother game essentially you know didn't really want to you know go full bloodbath i did expect an eu team to beat clg today i just yeah. didn't know which one wow even though we said that we were not going to like underestimate any teams we actually did disrespect them clg gonna have to lick their wounds now it felt really weird it felt like one of those games where i didn't even feel like i was playing that badly but i was still getting done when clg lost the uh, super massive in the group stages it was kind of this wave washing over uh, all the North American fans where they're like, ah, yes, we know this very well. Uh, the classic North American disappointment at international events. Prepping for SKT, just like prepping for any other team. We talked about, you know, their strengths and weaknesses, uh, how we plan to draft against them, and uh, overall, like, what we should be doing against that team. SKT looking to bounce back. Zero and two yesterday was SKT. I'm expecting a much stronger SKT than we've seen in the last two days, but who really knows what could happen. Baron is being started. Counter Logic Gaming are looking for the purple buff. The hammer throws Wolf into the pit. It's CLG get it. Sticks this on the front line. Flashes. He's down. There's no more damage from CLG. But who is the one that has to do it? He's being jumped on by Duke. They've managed to kill Bang. Both ADCs are dead and CLG the numbers advantage. They're looking for Faker. They've got him. I think SKT is like a really good team. They may be making a mistake, but you don't want to capitalize on it because, oh, they're, they're probably doing the right thing. They're the best team, right? The focus is the Nexus and Counter Logic Gaming scoring a magnificent win for America against the defending world champion. At the beginning of the day, we had said CLG, they lost to Supermassive. They're playing Supermassive uh -huh. again today. They're going to take the fight to them. No, they didn't wait for the super massive game. They came and took the fight to SKT of all teams. It really did kind of bring home the idea that the teams here at MSI are a lot closer than people thought. People just don't want to believe in NA in general. So that so when we finally beat SKT, we're not only proving to ourselves, but the whole world like, hey, NA is not this terrible region, you know? We can we can beat Korea 
and maybe they're not playing so well right now, but there's there's no excuse for losing an MSI. You're either better or you're worse, and right now we're doing better than Korea, so I think that says a lot of great things about NA and CLG. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Oriental Sports Center here in Shanghai in our fifth game of the day. As you can see, nighttime here in Shanghai. Counter Logic Gaming versus Royal Never Give Up about to hit the rift. Heading into it, RNG were undefeated in group stages, and they were looking extremely strong. Their team fighting was really, really good, and MLXD, the jungler, put out a lot of early pressure. Mata showed up to be the leader that everyone knew and thought that he was going to be. If RNG comes away with a victory, they lock in that number one spot mm -hmm. for the entire for the bracket stage of this tournament. For CLG, a win here locks in the bracket stages all together. So still a lot on the line for both these teams, on top of the fact that, you know, for CLG, this is about proving that they can beat RNG and taking that first win off of the undefeated team. Their first game against us, they were one one team fight or one more person dying to losing the game. We aced them like multiple times, but we're just a couple seconds off ending the game. If we get a good draft and we know how to play around whatever um, Mata is doing, I think we'll be fine. At this point, there's not a whole lot CLG can do to stop the push all the way through. They're cowed into their base. They're stuck into really just trying for a miracle assassination. And this might be the final fight of the game. Looper can't go back in, but Xiaohu has no problem tagging in to take out the Emperor. And that is going to be a godlike fight for RNG. Oh, Luz is down! And hold on. Six is going to it away. Looper gets his GA popped. That is a one for one so far. Looper will be back, but he gets knocked and popped and taken out. Shots the binding from Astro They find MLXG, and that is the miracle play that keeps CLG alive. Their base is in shambles, but they live another day. The communication was like, let's try to like counter their play, and then try to like neutralize the game instead of like playing like aggressively. See if they can contest this dragon. They absolutely have to, but it's going so low to, already. They have to go hard. CLG just have to force. They have no. They get the bind on Mata. Can they do it? They have just bite Baron and a oh! dragon. He's dying. I should say, Stixay does get Mata. The dragon goes down. It's secured by Xpithy. That is the oh first one God! tonight. Can they do oh, it? Oh, me? Can you believe? Do you have the faith in CLG? Because they just secured three. Looking They're for four. They're gonna get four. Looking for it. And can they end on this one? Are you kidding me? Smithy goes in and he lambs with spites to keep the dragon alive. So they can't get fifth dragon during the fight. Holy moly. Yeah, this is... CLG, they don't go in for the dragon steal. Chase they go in to finish the dragon fight. And RNG can't react in time. I think we could have bled a lot less than we did, but we were able to team fight anyways, even though we had a like 15k gold deficit. Looper is actually going to have to back off, but can they flank again? Darshan a little low. Death Mark onto who he. And they're starting to low, but Xiaohu is shut down by Stixay. I don't know how this one's going to turn out. And that's insane. Looper is going low, but he chrono breaks back. A double kill for who he. A kick for Oh my god! I can't believe it. A triple Dude, kill. They are going to win be the ace. Looper is down. CLG. Do you god believe, Kobe? Are you kidding me? They're going to take down the undefeated team here at MSI. A Nexus turret will fall. Another will fall. 42 minutes. And I never ones. doubted them. I never doubted them. CLG counter logic gaming with the most unlikely victory. The shocking thing about that game and why I got so excited and why all the fans at home were getting so excited at the end of that game is because they were down 17,000 gold. They eventually had to make that one last push and then they got baited in by, uh, by Jay Zazir and then we were able to win the fight. So I was pretty like amazed that we were able to hold on for that long in the soul win. CLG prove North America deserves their number one seed and they secure their spot to move in to the next stage of MSI.
that gave North American fans, you know, some hope that, oh my God, maybe, maybe North American can place at this tournament actually, and maybe they can actually accomplish something here. It was just pretty cool that we beat RNG because people were underestimating CLG a lot, and RNG was like seven and zero, like Immortals in uh, LC split, like no one could have beaten them, but we were the first one who proved that they can also lose the game. We made a really good showing for NA, and I think we can still do that in Worlds. We actually made a convincing statement. We worked really hard throughout this time. We improved so much. We learned so much through our time through the playoffs, through MSI, and we're only gonna use that to get better. But I'm not happy. I'm not really satisfied. I don't want to just be like, oh yeah, I got second place at MSI, now I can just slack the rest of the time and then, you know, expect to do well. Second place sucks. And I don't really want second place anymore. We got a lot of the, you know, congratulations, like you guys did so well this tournament. And like, after a loss, that's probably like the worst thing you could ever hear. Is like, congrats guys, you almost made it. And like, you never want to be at that point where you're happy about almost making it. All I care about is right now, what are we doing to get better? And that's gonna allow us to win another split and have another chance of playing SKT, going to the finals of Worlds, and winning it.